The Life and Sad Ending of Fred McMurray Frederick Martin McMurray was born August 30, 1908, in Kankakee, Illinois, the son of Maletta and Frederick Talmadge McMurray, both natives of Wisconsin. His aunt, Faye Holderness, was a vaudeville performer and actress. Before McMurray was two years old, his family moved to Madison, Wisconsin, where his father was a music teacher. They then relocated within the state to Beaver Dam, where his mother was born in 1880. He later attended school in Quincy, Illinois, before earning a full scholarship to Carroll College in Waukesha, Wisconsin. At Carroll, McMurray played the saxophone in numerous local bands. He did not graduate from the college. McMurray, as a featured vocalist, recorded in 1930 with the Gus Arnheim Orchestra on All I Want Is Just One Girl on the Victor label, and with George Olson on I'm In The Market For You and After A Million Dreams. Before signing with Paramount Pictures in 1934, he appeared on Broadway in Three's A Crowd, 1930-31, and alongside Sidney Greenstreet and Bob Hope in Roberta, 1933-34. to In his early career, McMurray played clarinet and tenor sax with the Gus Arnheim Orchestra from 1930 to 31. Later in the 30s, McMurray worked with film directors Billy Wilder and Preston Sturges, and actors Barbara Stanwyck, Henry Fonda, Humphrey Bogart, Marguerite Dietrich, and in seven films, Claudette Colbert, beginning with The Gilded Lily in 1935. Next, he co-starred with Katherine Hepburn in Alice Adams in 1935, with Joan Crawford in Above Suspicion in 1943, and with Carol Lombard in four productions, Hands Across the Table, 1935, The Princess Comes Across, 1936, and True Confession in 1937. Usually cast in light comedies as a decent, thoughtful character, The Trail of the Lonesome Pine, 1936, and in melodramas, Above Suspicion, 1943, and musicals, Where Do We Go From Here, 1945, McMurray became one of the movie industry's highest paid actors of the period. By 1943, his annual salary had reached $420,000, making him the highest paid actor in Hollywood and the fourth highest paid person in the nation. Despite being typecast as a nice guy, McMurray often said his best roles were when he was cast against type, such as under the direction of Billy Wilder and Edward Dim Turk. Perhaps his best-known bad guy performance was that of Walter Neff, an insurance salesman who plots with a greedy wife, played by Barbara Stanwyck, to murder her husband in the film noir classic Double Indemnity, 1944. In another turn... In the not-so-nice category, McMurray played the cynical, duplicitous lieutenant Thomas Kiefer in Dimitrix, 1954, The Cane Mutiny. Six years later, McMurray played Jeff Sheldrake, a two-timing corporate executive in Wilder's Oscar-winning rom-com The Apartment in 1960 with Jack Lemmon and Shirley MacLaine. In 1958, he guest starred in the premiere episode of NBC's Cimarron City Western series with George Montgomery and John Smith. McMurray's career continued upward the following year when he was cast as a father in the Disney Studios comedy The Shaggy Dog. Then, from 1960 to 1972, he starred on television in My Three Sons, a long-running, highly rated series. My Three Sons chronicles the life of widower and aeronautical engineer Stephen Douglas, played by McMurray, as he raises his three sons. Concurrent with My Three Sons, McMurray stayed busy in films, starring as Professor Ned Brainerd in Disney's The Absent-Minded Professor in 1961 and in the sequel Son of Flubber, 1963. Using his star power clout, McMurray had a provision in his My Three Sons contract that all of his scenes on that series were to be shot in two separate month-long production blocks and filmed first. That condensed performance schedule provided him more free time to pursue his work in films, maintain his ranch in Northern California, and enjoy his favorite leisure activity, golf. Over the years, McMurray became one of the wealthiest actors in the entertainment business, 
primarily from wise real estate investments and from his notorious frugality. After the cancellation of My Three Sons in 1972, McMurray made only a few more film appearances before retiring in 1978. In his personal life, McMurray was married twice. He married Lillian Lamont on June 20, 1936, and the couple adopted two children, Susan, born 1940, and Robert, born 1946. After Lamont died of cancer on June 22, 1953, he married actress June Haver the following year. The couple subsequently adopted two more children, twins born in 1956, Catherine and Lori. McMurray and Haver's marriage lasted 37 years until Fred's death. A lifelong heavy smoker, McMurray suffered from throat cancer in the late 70s, and it reappeared in 1987. He also suffered a severe stroke during Christmas 1988, which left his right side paralyzed and his speech affected, although with therapy he was able to make a 90% recovery. Sadly, after suffering from leukemia for more than a decade, McMurray died from pneumonia at age 83 on November 5, 1991, at his home in Santa Monica, California. His body was entombed in Holy Cross Cemetery. He has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6421 Hollywood Boulevard.